Just have kind of a cool story to tell here. It's about the newest Detroit Piston or one of the newest Detroit Pistons. I'm not sure if technically he's the newest, but Monty Morris coming home to play for the Pistons. We all know that he's from Flint. I don't know if we all know, but he grew up playing in Flint and he recently talked to Amari Sankofa and this was just an awesome interview and how he found out he was going and all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to tell you about how um, he responded to be here, what that's what he is going to look like and what his play is going to provide for the Pistons and even for furthermore, what it's going to provide for the community. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Um, but he said he, um, his agent called him and this was right after the trade. He didn't know about it yet. And his agent was like, Hey, you're going home. And Morris, uh, was like, Hey, what do you mean, man? And he said, you got traded to the Pistons and, uh, Morris just kept using the word surreal. It's just surreal to be back here um as he addressed the media in flint which was kind of cool um in fact before he was even drafted uh and i think it was 2017 he was drafted by the nuggets he said that it would be a dream of his and he'd love the opportunity to wear the red white and blue um of the pistons jersey and now here we are a little bit later and it's there and this is some of the stuff that he said and i want to give sanko for the credit for this because he did the interview um, but he said this, he said, I always dreamed about playing for the Pistons just where I grew up. He said on Saturday, um, I was at the boys and girls club a lot. We would get a lot of Pistons gear. And I remember when Chauncey, Ben, Tayshon and Rip came down, uh, he said it was like 2003. He was eight years old. He was running around the boys and girls club. And I know what it feels like what it feels like to be a piston. I used to watch the games and the nosebleeds in the palace and the pride of just being a piston. I know what it feels like. So what he's saying is no, of course he doesn't know what it is like to be a Detroit piston on the court, but he grew up a piston fan. And I think many of us can relate to him in that manner. I think we all kind of feel like pistons. A lot of us have gone to pistons games. A lot of us have watched pistons games and uh, it, we just feel like this is something that we love doing. Um, I said the Pistons traded for Morris um, and the first night of free agency, they coveted the six foot two point guard. Who's one of the NBA's best at taking care of the ball and will add shooting and experience to their young backcourt. So I want to pause and for a second there, I'm going to get back to some of the stuff that he said that he loved about Detroit, the city uh, Flint, just being on the East side. So I, I want to talk about some of those things, but first I want to talk about what he brings to this team. And I think that is one of the, one of the overlooked things about uh, Monty Morris is his ability to hold on to the ball. It's his ability to hold on to the ball. And he's done this no matter where he has played, whether it's in Denver for the first five years of his career or in Washington last year. So he has averaged um, last year. Let's just go last year when he was on Washington because you can say, all right, let's take out the really good teams with the Denver Nuggets and things like that. Last year in Washington, he averaged 5.3 assists, okay? But he only turned the ball over one time that's a 5.3 to one assist to turnover ratio. Nobody on the Pistons was even close to that. In fact, I would say the biggest thing that is a thing that Cade Cunningham has to work on. Jaden Ivy has to work on these guys that are our primary ball handlers. The biggest thing they have to work on is ball control, holding on to the ball, not letting it go. He is, and I'm telling you right now, Mark, like this dude is, Monty Morris, obviously, is the, like a model of consistency. He's a model of consistency. His three point percentage is overall 39%. It's never dipped below 38 and it's never gone above 41. Like he's just been in that level. If I read to you after his rookie year, it was 41, 38, 38. 39, 38. I mean, like, he is the model of consistency. What about his two point field goal percentage? The last three years, 53, 54, 54. The year, two years before that, 53. His one outlier was 1920 when he only shot 49%. Like, he is consistent. 
And that is what young players need. They need consistency. They need consistency. They need to see how it's done. They need to be able to see from another player what it looks like to have a not only know how to win, because he was on a lot of winning teams in Denver, but also the little things you have to do, what you're looking for in order to allow you to be a good player. And here's, here's the other side of it, too. He's always played heavy minutes. Not heavy, but it's not like embarrassing minutes. Even in Denver, even in Denver, you know, you got Jamal Murray, you got all this kind of stuff. In his four years in Denver, the last four, he played 24, 22, 25, and 30 minutes per game. Yeah, the 30 minutes per game, Murray was out, right? Like, he, he, he was out. He was injured with the ACL. But still, he played large amounts of minutes. So what he can bring on the court is huge. But what he brings off the court might be just as big in helping shape these young guys on the, on the, on the court, but also pouring into the community. He said, I'm always big on giving back. As I've gotten older, the youth right here is what matters. When I was younger, Mateen Cleaves, Charlie Bell, and Mo Pete, and those guys, they was always doing that, and you couldn't wait to go to their camps at Flint Northwestern and stuff like that. I feel like it's my turn, my turn to step into that role, and I am ready to do it. All right, so this is kind of perfect, isn't it? Isn't it perfect? We're all talking about how, you know, is killing the guy? Probably not. So what do we replace him with? We replace him with a guy who's not that old, <laughs> not that old. Can be 28 this year, right? He's not that old. He's consistent. He is the exact thing that young people need. But then he knows his responsibility goes deeper than the court. When asked about why he wants to do this, why he wants to take questions from young fans and all this kind of stuff, he said, for one, this is my city. You have a guy coming back that loves this area, Flint and Detroit. Secondly, I'm a Detroit pist Piston, and anything I can do to impact the youth and impact the community, the community needs this. And we're going to keep doing more like this, keep the community together and shine the light on it. We got a lot of negative publicity, a lot. It's on me, and I'm going to take pride in it all year and just do stuff to do around here and just get back that juju back going here, going around here. It's easier now to do it that I'm 45 minutes away. I'm right here. He knows his responsibility. He knows his responsibility on the court. He knows his responsibility off the court. How excited are you is the question for this signing. I know it seems small, but how nice is it going to be to have a guard coming off the bench that it's not like, oh, Corey Joseph is in, right? Or, oh, Killian Hayes, how is he going to mess this up? Like, it's, it's nice to have a guy who's going to be consistent off the bench that's going to help you win games. Not a guy where it's like, well, if Corey Joseph has a good night or, man, this, I know he's playing pretty well, but this shouldn't be the answer, right? And it's not like you're waiting for Killing to develop. It's like, no, this is a guy. He's going to come off the bench. He's going to help you win games, period, done. All right, I hope you liked the video. Uh, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one.